Okay, we're now live. Hi, this is Elliot Fishman. It's May 4th. Um, it's uh, May the 4th be with you or something like that. I'm not sure where that comes from, but I, today is something about Star Wars Day. So I um, hope everybody is doing well. Now, um, in trying to pick a topic this week, I didn't know what to pick. So I came up with cystic adrenal lesions. And the reason I picked that, you may want to know, maybe you don't want to know, but if you want to know, the reason I picked it is I read <coughs> a couple of good articles last week or last weekend on cystic adrenal lesions. And so I thought, all right, I learned a few things. I don't have the article in front of me, but let me tell you, um, <coughs> excuse me, let me tell you what I learned while drinking a vitamin water. The um, If you think about a cystic adrenal lesion, the first thing you think about is an adrenal cyst, and that is really the most common lesion. Adrenal cysts can be small, they can be large, they can cause mass effect or symptoms. Anything large enough can cause a symptom. There's epithelial cysts and epidermoid cysts. There are also parasitic cysts. Now, we don't typically see parasitic cysts. Most of what we see are epithelial cysts. We also see, um, we see them, and occasionally we see them removed. They can calcify. Again, the ones that are removed are typically patients who have symptoms. And although no one is looking at the lesion and saying, oh, I worry about cancer, be a primary metastatic, it's just that it's bothering the patient. and whether it's a liver cyst, whether it's a uh, splenic cyst, whether it's a um, pancreatic cyst or renal cyst, sometimes things are removed just because they're large enough, and by being large enough, they cause mass effect and all sorts of problems. So that's easy. Then you say, okay, you got past the cysts. What else can you be talking about? Well, then there's tumors that are cystic. Now, of course, anything can be cystic if it's very necrotic. So. But before I get to tumors, what if I said a hematoma? An old hematoma, whether it's due to an underlying mass, maybe less likely, or maybe it was due to being on anticoagulant therapy or trauma. Once a lesion from a cyst bleeds, and then as it changes over, as the um, hemoglobin is absorbed and over time, several things happen. One is it can become uh, gone. Right, the big hemorrhage becomes uh, smaller over time, typically. Sometimes you're gonna have dense calcification of the adrenal glands. I always like to mention when I see a cystic adrenal lesion that has rim calcification, the first thing in my mind is a hematoma, or an old hematoma, that is. Though epithelial cysts can, and epidermoid cysts can also calcify. But an old hematoma is a good thing to think about. Now, in terms of tumors, we always talk about pheochromocytomas as hypervascular lesions, when that is the truth most of the time they are. But I've shown some very nice cases in conference where you see large pheos that are cystic. Now, sometimes there's significant enhancement around the edge, and you're thinking pheo, though you can't rule out an ACC. But sometimes the whole thing is cystic, and I've seen a few cases where the patient has bled in a pheo, and you don't really see the primary mass itself, but you see a big cystic lesion. So I've seen a few cases go to surgery with that history. I've also seen primary adrenal cortical carcinomas. They become necrotic and they become cystic. I think an important thing when you have cystic lesions separating malignancy from benign is when they're benign, you don't really see a definable wall. If there is a wall around the cyst, there's no irregularity and thickening. When you have a uh, cystic lesion that's a primary tumor like an ACC, metastasis like renal cell melanoma, the rim is thickened and with contrast it's irregular and enhancing. So it's a necrotic tumor. Again the same thing is true with pheochromocytomas. Now what other possible things can be cystic? You kind of quickly run out of things. Lymphoma can be low density, uh, but typically when you have lymphoma, primary in the adrenal, surely, they're triangular. 
They can be round when they're, um, you know, multi-organ where you have lymphoma involvement, spleen, liver, kidneys, big time nodes and the like, so you don't just have adrenal involvement. Um, so that, that becomes an important thing to consider as well. And again, what else could you have? Infarcts, well, a big infarct of the adrenal, which is pretty rare. Uh, you could then bleed and then as it uh, resolves, you can see cystic changes. So I think an important thing to think about is what do you do with a cystic adrenal lesion? One thing is look at old films. Okay, that's good if you have it. What if you don't have it? Then look at the wall, look for enhancement or lack of enhancement. If you see a wall, is it thin or thick? Is there additional enhancement present? Maybe you need to get some lab values. Could this be a cystic pheo? When I show conference cases now, as I do every Wednesday, way back when, like two years ago, I would show pheos and everyone would get it. And then if I showed a cystic pheo, nobody would get it. Now when I show a cystic pheo, people say, well, let's go through a cystic lesions and we should consider a cystic pheochromocytoma. So we've learned um, what we can see and we're, we're better at it than we ever have been. So um, that part is, is kind of good. Um, and th those are the main things I really have to say. If you want, I think the article will be in the June uh, references on CTSS. You can see it there. And let's see who's watching. Monteverda Upadaya, hello. And John Biakino, John's watching from home. And may the fourth be with me too, I agree. And um, hope all is well, John. And um, I'm Jayhawk. I'm in the hospital. I'm Jayhawk tomorrow, but I'm in the hospital on Monday. I'll see you Monday in the hospital. That is, I'm reading films in the hospital. And John's one of our senior techs who typically is in the hospital in Zayed. Um, so that's really all I got to say about cystic, cystic adrenal lesions. Again, think about the differential diagnosis. Most of the time, they are unilateral. Again, if they're bilateral, then I'm thinking about bleeds. I'm thinking about metastasis, okay? ACC, 2% are bilateral, so it's not going to be cystic. Pheos, 10% are bilateral, but it's hard to imagine getting two pheos that are cystic. That'd be really, really a uh, great diagnosis, however. So that's where I'm going to go, and that's where I'm going to stop, and I hope that's helpful. I am working on a new talk on adrenal. I'm probably going to record it this weekend, so hopefully you'll be able to see it in a month or so. And with that, I'm back in the USA and had a great time with the meeting in Lyon, France. And I hope everybody is doing well. See you later, guys.